everyone, and welcome to another episode of This Week in IPNO. We are, of course, as always, live from my kitchen table. We have a very special guest. We have Jeff Williams, who is the Associate Director of Mechanical Maintenance and Planning here at Rutgers. Jeff, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. So, Jeff, for... People who don't, I feel like everyone at Rutgers knows who you are, but for people who don't know who you are, can you give us a little bit of a background about your career at Rutgers from where you started to where you are at now? All right, of course. Uh, I started at Rutgers back in uh, 91. Uh, I actually started in the dining services division. I was a dishwasher. Uh, I was there for approximately seven to eight months. Uh, Then I was able to bid out and go on to a grounds position. Uh, And I worked on the primarily on the Livingston campus uh, for two to three years. And then the uh, craft trainee program opened up, which uh, for those that don't know, this is a program where they send you to school to be uh, to learn a trade. Uh, So you're actually an apprentice for four years while you work on the job and go to school. Uh, I did that. I went to school for four years, became an electrician. I was an electrician in the field for uh, three, between three to four years. Uh, And then a entry level management position opened up as a planner estimator. Uh, I actually applied for it and was fortunate that I got it. Um, I stayed a planner estimator uh, roughly, uh, I'm going to say seven, eight years. Uh, then my boss uh, actually retired. Uh, I went for that position. Um, I was fortunate once again to get that position. Uh, stayed there for a couple of years, and then I've been uh, promoted to my current position as associate director. I've been here at Rutgers roughly this year. In October, it'll be 30 years. Wow. Wow. And the time flies by fast, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. um, what advice would you give someone starting their career at Rutgers? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the number one advice uh, I would give, uh, which has always served me well, uh, always be willing to help. Uh, always be willing to uh, have a positive attitude be willing to do whatever is asked of you. A lot of times you'll be asked to do things that may not necessarily uh, be in your job description. Um, but I always tell people, whenever anybody asks, you want to be the person that someone can count on and say, you know, I'm going to go to that person because they never refuse. They're always cheerful. They're always willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done uh, for the benefit of the university and the department. Uh, I've lived by this rule uh, my 30 years here, and I have to tell you, it has served me very well. Yeah, I completely agree with you. When it, from, from my experience, because of Rutgers is such a, a complex place and the problems are so, you know, from day to day, things just change. And, and you know, you have unique situations that pop up left and right. Um, so having that flexibility and having people who are, who are flexible and willing to go you know, just a little bit more out of their comfort zone than, than, you know, what was by the letter in their job description is, is just so valuable because you can't have, like I said, you can't have people who are incapable of, of being flexible. And, you know, so, so speaking to that, what would you say to somebody who is working in a certain position in the university right now and might feel stuck? Uh, currently, uh, what I would say was um, Rutgers is a great place to learn. Um, there are a lot of opportunities here um, to better yourself through education. Uh, there are a lot of different jobs that come open um, that I would apply. I would encourage people to apply for. Uh, there are a lot of resources that are available to help you move ahead, uh, whether it's uh, coworkers. Uh, professors, people you meet every day. Um, I would just say keep improving yourself. Definitely take advantage of whatever educational opportunities are here, whether you go back to school, whether you take a continuing education class, whether you just reach out to other employees. If you see somebody doing something that maybe you'd like to do, 
um, just reach out and talk to them. Most people, like I said, are very helpful. Uh, that's what I did uh, when I was on grounds. I worked a lot of times with the electricians um, because they would do a lot of the sound systems and setups for special events and speeches and stuff. And I would be the person that would deliver the equipment, the electrical equipment and podiums. And I would just get to talk to them about their job and what they liked and, you know, how could I get into it? Um, and like I said, people were just helpful. They, they told me the path to go to. So that was one of the things I would say to the people, just keep improving yourself, reach out, take advantage of all opportunities that we have here. And there are numerous opportunities here at the university to improve yourself. Yeah, I love that you mentioned just apply first, right? Like that. Yeah. So, that's oh, yeah. <laughs> just apply. You, there, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt you or harm you. If anything, it, it signals that that you want to take on more responsibility, that you're looking for something um, that's outside of the current role. So those are all positive things. So I'm very and, and a lot of times that. I say that because a lot of times people want to apply, but they're they have this self-doubt. So they're saying, well, you know, I don't know if I'm right for that or if I'm qualified. And I always tell people, hey, put in for it. You know, um, you may get it, you may not. You never know. Um, if you get it, people are not here to make sure that you fail. Everyone here is to make sure you succeed. So I always tell people, don't be afraid to apply for a job. Always apply for a job, even if you think you're not qualified for something you want to do, you know. That's the first step. Definitely. In in your like in your career path here, um, you named like all these different positions that you had, and 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 all these like different resources that you utilized to get from one to the other. What in in your own experience do you think was the most valuable resource that you utilized? That like once you did that, you were like my whole path changed. Um. If you could even boil it down to one, I mean, it could be like an amalgamation of things. <laughs> That's um, an SAT word, by the way. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I I think um, I think just showing people that I was willing to um, better myself and uh, do whatever needed to be done, and having a positive attitude. Um, once I showed people that I had a positive attitude, that I was willing to do whatever, everyone seemed to, to want to want me to succeed even more. So they went out of their way. Um, when I first got into the university, I will tell you, I've been very fortunate. I've had some great bosses over the years. From my first boss in uh, dining services, uh, once he saw at my, um, my hard work and my attitude, he encouraged me to just go further. Um, so I tell people, you know, just be willing to do whatever it has to be done, uh, have that positive attitude, um, be friendly and open, and people will, will, will bend over backwards to help you. And I think that's what has helped me. Like I said, along the way, I've had numerous people. Uh, I can't say enough about all my bosses over the years who have just encouraged me, pushed me, helped me along the way. Yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like people people kind of discount all like the help that they can receive and feel like they need to like do everything themselves when like it's like 80% is is showing up and 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 making like making the right connections, you know. That's definitely that's definite. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of it is getting the word out as to what those resources are. So, so that's what we're trying to do at this point with with my path. Um, just trying to get people to be more aware of the help that's available to them, what programs are available to them. There's there's some things that are already online. There's some things that are going to be coming online soon. So, that's all going to assist in in that uh, communication process. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. That uh, covers it for us, unless uh, Richard Brittany, I don't know if you had any other questions. Um, but if not, then uh, Jeff, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on and for telling us a little bit about your story and about uh, about your path. Not just my path; it's your path. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, go ahead. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'll say this to anybody. If anybody want, needs to know anything or is there any way I can help anybody, if they'd like to know about the craft trainee program, 
my door is always open. I have an open door policy. Um, you don't need to make an appointment. I just say, just call me to make sure I'm going to be here because I'm out in the field a lot. But I'm here to help anybody. Uh, I'm here to give my knowledge and whatever I can do to help someone improve themselves. All right. Well, awesome. thanks for coming on and uh, reach out to Jeff if, 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 you, uh, if you have those questions. There you All go. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.